Hello painting peeps and welcome. It's Kathleen from Cause Creations. Welcome to the No Bra Zone guys. Happy you joined me here. We're gonna be doing a little painting. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world. Just one of them though. I have lots of favorite things. But I wanted to start off this uh, um, video by answering a couple of questions and talking to you about a couple of really quick things, guys. If you're not interested, just move on forward and uh, you can go from there. But um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, a lot of people reach out and say, Kathleen, you use a lot of paint. You waste a lot of paint. You have a lot of paint. Well, I kind of don't. And I save everything that drips off of this canvas. For example, this canvas is already flooded. It's flooded with our base coat, which is the metallic accents, and this is the seashell. And when I flood my canvas, I do all the sides. Then I prop my canvas up with this little stick. I put it back there, whoop, and I let the excess paint run off. Now, what do I do with that excess paint? Well, most of it I grab with my popsicle stick and stick it back into my little container here that I have a lid for, and it stays good for a really long time. The rest of it I pick up with my sponge, bo sponge brush, excuse me, and I paint my sides with it. Now, if there's anything left over, it goes in my slop bucket. I have two slop buckets, a dark slop bucket and a light slop bucket. And I put it all in here. Eventually I mix it up. If it's a darker color, it generally turns to black. Sometimes I add a little black to it. And I use it for my base coat. I use it to prime a canvas. I use it for all kinds of things. So as you can see, there's not a lot of paint there, and I will utilize it when it's all said and done. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, starting next week, guys, um, I'm going to start featuring once a week another YouTube channel, a young up-and-coming YouTube channel. I don't get to watch a lot of YouTube videos, but every once in a while I reach out and I look for the newbies because the newbies can be exciting. Um, they're fresh, they're new, they try new things. And I have come across quite a few of very talented artists. So starting next week on one of my videos, I'm gonna start featuring a, another YouTube artist to help kind of get them rocking and rolling, help promote their channel a little bit. And I'll tell you what I know about them. I'll show you some of their art and uh, hook you up with their YouTube, Instagram, Etsy shops, whatever. But I'm recommending them because they're good and they're cool and they have things to offer to our community. So Stay tuned for that because I'm excited about it. And our first young lady reached out to me, uh, oh, about a, a month ago and said, hey, Kathleen, and I checked her out, watched all her videos, and she is a sweetheart. So um, their um, information will be in the description box. You can always click on it, but I'm very, very excited about that. What else did I want to talk to you? Oh, people ask me if I torch my paintings. Yes, I torch. I torch after my base coat goes down. I torch several times throughout the, the uh, painting process. I just don't show it to you all the time because these paintings sometimes take me two hours and I don't want you sitting through the stuff that you really don't need to see a lot of, like me torching my paint. So yes, I do torch. What else? Oh, I think that's it. Other than the painting I'm doing today, I'm doing a ring pour. And I wanted to explain a question that is asked me all the time when I do a multiple ring pour. Um, at least I think it's called a ring pour. You pour all your, I don't know all the names to these techniques. You layer your paints in your cup, you pour them out, and then you move your ring pours around. Now, Sometimes I do one at a time. 
on this canvas, I'm going to do three separate ring pour cups. I'm going to pour one and I'm going to maneuver it. And people ask me, Kathleen, oh my gosh, your second ring pour, your third ring pour, they're not moving or they're not moving that much. And let me tell you why. It's, it's, it's kind of an easy question to answer, but it's a good question. I do one ring cup at a time, manipulate it, get it to where I want it, get the majority of the excess paint from that cup off the canvas. That way, when I add my second cup and manipulate that ring pour, it doesn't move this one too much. Now, that's if your paints are the right consistency. My ring pours are thicker my paints than when I do swipes and other techniques. I use the mixed pouring medium to thicken up my paints. So when I mix my paints, I put my paint in a cup, I add my regular pouring medium, which is 50% Floetrol and 50% Golden GAC 800. I stir it up, then I look at the consistency and I decide if that consistency is good for my ring pour. I like it thicker than my swipes. My swipe paints leave very little trace when the paint hits the paint off the popsicle stick. In my ring pours, it leaves a trace. As Sweet Mina says, it leaves a mound on a mound on a mound. So that tells me if my consistency is correct. I add my mixed pouring medium to it, stir it up, and then I check the consistency. If I need a little bit more, I keep it right next to me in this little squeeze bottle. So I hope that answers your question about why my ring pours, when I do multiple ones, do not move. Now, another thing that you need to pay attention to when you're doing your multiple ring cups is the base coat, because the base coat helps to move those paints as well. Sometimes you'll see me add more base coat between the ring cups. And the reason I do that is I want to use that paint to move that ring cup pour where I want it. And you're going to see that hopefully today. Oh, is that a hair? No, it's just kind of marbleizing. Okay, so let's talk about our paints. Our base coat is down. It is Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents, and this is the Metallic Seashell Good Paint. Little expensive. I think this was about 25 bucks, but it goes a long, long way. And quite honestly, this paint, this is my Golden Fluid Pearl, Fluid Acrylics Iridescent Pearl. When you mix them in a cup side by side, you can almost not tell the difference. So a very good uh, value on this, and you can also get them in smaller containers. This yummy cup right here is my Golden Fluids, and that is their turquoise. We're using leftover paints from yesterday's pour. This cup right here is kind of fun and creamy and shimmery. That is the golden turquoise mixed up with my pouring medium. Then I added some of the iridescent pearl by Golden. Then I added a little bit of the iridescent silver by Golden. It's like being a mad scientist, guys. We've talked about that before. I love mixing paints. This right here is my golden fluid, and that's the Payne's Gray. This, for good luck, is my golden iridescent pearl in the fluid paint. This right here I used yesterday. These are all leftover paints, except the one that I mixed up where I added the silver and pearl. This is Treasure Gold Purple Topaz. Beautiful paint, guys. And this right here is our golden iridescent silver all by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my cups right here. We're going to do three of them. Oh, I wanted to show you these. I got them on, on Amazon. I like them because I believe they're a five ounce cup. 
very easy to mix up in, and they got a handy dandy little lid I put on. So when I have my leftover paints, it keeps them nice and fresh for a long period of time. So you can buy a case of them for like 23 bucks, and I think there's 500 or so of them. So I think that's all I wanted to talk to you all about. I'm going to go ahead, put some tunes on for you, put some tunes on for me and the little man who is sleeping by my feet. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna paint. We're gonna get busy, guys. Glad you're here.
the night.